Mine is Peyton Peng, who's coming from the University of Illinois. Thank you for the introduction. So um, today I'm going to talk about how to use the DNA shape to predict the gene expression form sequence. And we call it as the sequ um, sequence to expression modeling. So first of all, what's a sequence to expression modeling? As you can see from this figure, there is a gene called if. And in the upstream, there is an enhancer regulating the transcription for this um, gene. And the model will take the enhancer sequence and also look into the transcription factor binding site. Also use the information we have for all the TF concentration profiles. All the information together, we will predict the gene expression profiles for the fruit fly embryo. So this is basically how the sequence to expression modeling works. And in 2010, our group proposed a model called the GEMSTAT. So the GEMSTAT basically take the enhancer sequence as input and then use the position web matrix or the PW models to annotate the TF binding site. And then also use the TF concentration profiles and some uh, thermodynamic based statistical methods to finally predict the gene expression. And in the step of predicting the TF binding site. The gems that use the position weight matrix. The PWN have been prevalent for like 25 years. However, there are some evidence now showing there may be some deficiency in the PWN models. Firstly, that the PWN assumes all the nucleotides are independent, but this may not be the case. And secondly, that the flanking sequence outside the PWN, which is less specific. There have been evidence showing that this part of the flanking sequence may also enhance the specificity of TF binding. So therefore, there are many alternative models being proposed to um, handle this kind of problem. And one among them is the DNA shape model. So the DNA shape contains four types of features. The first one is the MGW minor group width, row, and propeller twigs, helix twigs. And there are many uh, literature shows that the DNA shape-based model can have a better predicting in the TF DNA binding. So therefore, in this work, what we want to do is that we want to go a step beyond this, that not only predict the TF um, binding site. We want to use the DNA shape data to predict the gene expression. So therefore, the main questions we want to ask in this project is that can models using DNA shape perform at least as well as or even better than the PWM-based models in predicting the gene expression? So this is the whole goal of this project. So. To build this kind of model, the first question we want to do, the pr first problem we need to do is that how to quantify the binding site affinity from the DNA shape. So here is the pipeline how we did it. Here is the um, potential binding site sequence. And we use four shape feature vectors to describe this binding site. So at each nucleotide position, there will be a value describing each types of the shape feature vectors. And then we add on two more values here. One is the mean for the whole vector. And the other is the standard deviation for the same vector. And then finally, we concatenate all the four feature vectors together to, to a meta feature vector. And this vector will be used as an input to our machine, machine learning model, which is we use the random forest classifier here. So for every particular transcription factor, we train a random forest classifier on it. And the training data set, we got it from the flag factor survey. And in this work, we mainly look at nine types of transcription factors. So for each transcription factor, we train a random forest. And the random forest will predict a score here. And we define this score as shape score. And the shape score ranges between zero and one, where one means that it's very likely to be bound by this particular TF. Whereas if it's zero, it means it's very unlikely to be bound by this particular TF we are looking at. So after we get the shape score here, the next step we want to do is that how to plug in this shape score into our thermodynamic based models. So in the standard gemstat, uh, PWM based gemstat, 
the contribution for the bunny side mainly depends on two things. First, the, con the concentration for the TF, and secondly, is the mismatch energy calculated from the PWM. So here, we just tweak this term a little bit and plug in the DNA shape score here, and we add one more parameter k into the whole formula. So this is basically how this model we built. And then we fit both DNA shape model and also the PWM based models on a set of 37 enhancers. These enhancers are responsible for regulating the anterior, posterior paranin in the um, Drosophila embryo. So in the scalar plot, you can see here, mo most of the enhancers got improvement when using the DNA shape compared to the PW model. And if we qual quantitatively take a look at the numbers here, we did a 10 cross validation on um, both models five times, and we get the average value for the goodness of fit for the two models. So in the shape based model, we got 0.72 compared to the PW model, which is only got 0.67. So at this point, we are confident saying that the DNA shape model perform arguably better than the PWM based model. And to better appreciate the difference between the two models, I plot all the, uh, I plot the gene expression profiles for all the 37 enhancers. And here I select six of them to show. So how to read these figures? The blue lines are the real data, which are the ground truths for the gene expression. And the purple one is the prediction from the PW models. And the yellow one are the prediction from the shape-based models. So through all these plots, one thing we can see is that some spurious peaks that used to be predicted by the PWM models is now removed by the shape model. And the second thing we can see here is that the shape model will have more accurately predicted boundaries compared to the PWM models. So the question you might ask is that the DNA shape, shape scores might just be a transformation from the sequence. They are intrinsically the same. So here we want to see if it's really the same. So we check the relationship between the SHAP score and the LOR score. And this is one of the TF we look at, the KNI Knerp. And we found the correlation is only 0.5. And we look into all the nine TFs we use in this model, and most of them doesn't have a high correlation, especially even giant, just around 0.2. So the average of all of them, the correlation is um, 0.5. So at this point, we are confident to say that the shape score is not redundant to the PWM score. And also, it provides additional information that the PWM score cannot capture, and which is useful in predicting the gene expression. And lastly, we are interested in one more thing, which is that there are many TF binding models saying that if we, have the, we combine the sequence and the DNA shape data together, we will have a better predicting in the TF DNA binding. And we want to see if it's the same case in the gene expression prediction. And um, we found the answer to be no. So we used two different methods to combine the PWM and DNA shape together. And neither of the integrative models show improvement compared to PWM only or shape only models. So to conclude the whole words, we got to um, we learned two things. Firstly, we demonstrate that the DNA shape model is arguably better than the PWM based model in predicting the gene expression. And secondly, since there are more and more high throughput data sets available like the PBM or SELECTS, we anticipate that if we have more of these kind of high throughput data sets, the advantage of the shape based model will be more apparent in predicting the gene expression. And I would like to thank all my um, colleagues in Professor Sarah Sinha's group. And this project is founded by NSF and NIH. I'm ready for the questions. Thanks.
Thanks. <coughs> Thanks. That was very interesting. I'm I'm curious about your choice of doing a machine learning the random forest thing and then putting it into a thermodynamic model. Mm -hmm. And I wonder whether you considered doing something more direct and and comparing to that. Like, could you just directly go to the prediction through a, a, some other machine learning technique? Or does the thermodynamics give you something? Yeah. So for the first thing is the cho the choice for the machine learning model, we try both SVM and random forest, and it didn't show many difference on the two models. So we just cho focus on the random forest. And the second thing is how if we don't train a model before plug in the thermodynamics model. But the question is the SHAP scores have more information than the LLR. Is LLR is just like one number, and we want to have a way to plug in there. And yes, we tried different types of methods not using the machine learning model, but it didn't have, it didn't show improvement. I think the question was, did you consider replacing GEMSAT uh, with a machine learning method for predicting expression? <coughs> okay, so for the, for replacing the gems, because we are more confident in this kind of thermodynamics based model, because it has the mo molecular interaction, the, use the biophysical basis to um, train this kind of model. So we have more biological interpretation if we use the thermodynamics based model compared to we use the machinery models. Hi, nice talk. So I had a question. Um, you're training your shape based model on the data separately from the the PWM part, right? And then you're training the PWM part without the shape parameters, and then you're putting them together. So I was wondering if, if you considered um, building models that, that use both types of features simultaneously, because it seems that your conclusion that, you know, integrating them doesn't help may not, you know, may, may change if you actually build models based on the mix of the two types of features and then use those together to predict your, your, your expression. Um, um. So uh, basically, we try two types. The integratively LR ones is for one of the kind. We have the LR score and use it as an extra feature for the random forest mm -hmm. and put all the things together to train a like a shape prompt score, and it doesn't it doesn't help. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. <coughs> 